What an illustrious group I have here. We're going to talk to all of these guys first, but I want to start. I want to tell you how much good it does my heart, Coach, to see that orange blazer. Man, how about that? Looking good. What, what was the story? Tell me about the first time you wore that. Tell me about the first time you wore the orange blazer. In 1975, when I came to Illinois, and I haven't had it off just since. <laughs> what, what, led you, what led you to Illinois? What made you decide to make that move? Well, first of all, uh, when I came to Illinois, the first ball game, we had a sprinkling of orange. Didn't see the orange any place. So our goal was, and the football coaches wanted blue. So we started working on the orange. And we did a great job for the past several years. You walk into the assembly hall, State Farm Center, it's a sea of orange. So many great teams in Illinois. Coach Henson, of course, took one of the final four, but I'll tell you what, when Dave Downey was there, he would put up some serious numbers for the Illini, too. It sort of broke a dry spell for Illinois about winning a Big Ten championship. What do you remember about that season? Well, I remember that we had a real good, balanced team. We had everybody scored at one time on that five-man team more than 25 points in a game. So I'm just here kind of representing a real team, not just one individual. That's a, that is a classy Hall of Fame answer. But you put 53 up in a night, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that still stands as a single game scoring record for an individual. Am I correct there? Well, I am correct. Well, it was nice to be able to do that. <laughs> and particularly against Indiana. <laughs> At Indiana. How many would you have had if there had been a three-point line? It was bef before the three-point yeah, line. Yeah, if you'd had one. Well, as a matter of fact, there have been five people score 50 in a Big Ten game, all before the three-point line. And it probably was a good thing Lou wasn't the coach. I wouldn't have got that many shots, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you two guys, Jim, you overlapped a little bit on campus, right? You guys were there yeah, partially the part of the time at the same time? Well, you, you, tell me about it. You, you saw him score the 53 points? You know, I kept thinking, boy, I, I, I kept thinking that, you know, I, I could play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he was such a star. I mean, he was, he was the man on campus. 53 points, and even with, if you had a three-point line, that's, that's unbelievable. What about, what about your time there, too? You were in contention for the Heisman Trophy, finished in the top three, took a team to a championship, to Rose Bowl. What's your most lasting memory when you think back on those days, those days that for many in this room, so important to you? Very honestly, the most lasting memories I have of those days are these guys right out here that I played with. They are, I, I can't tell you how thankful I, I, am, I am for the amount of guys that showed up for this, and I really mean that. That is the most lasting thing I have about playing on the University of Illinois football team. Great bunch of guys, really tough guys that, you know, Ron Gunther is a guard on that team, all Big Ten, and most people won't believe that. Uh, Greg Schumacher, who I played with in high school, and we've known each other almost 60 years. I mean, those are memories. Now, you didn't win the Heisman, and nowadays, when we do the Heisman Trophy ceremony, it's a, big, it's a big weekend. We televise the thing, bring the families in, everybody finds out there's a big buildup. How'd you find out that Mike Garrett from USC had edged you out? It's, it's a little different uh, back then. Um, I, I, I heard the announcement that Garrett won it, that's all. I mean, we, I think where I, were you? I think I, was, you? I think I was out in New York. There, you know, there was an all-American thing out in New York and, and uh, we were out there at the time and say, hey, someone came up and said, you didn't win it. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> you, know? So, uh, you know, what are you gonna do? It, you know, now you know you have the top five guys come for the Iceman show and, and you know, just things are so different now and, and, and for the better, I think. Now. Dave, Jim said that he saw you play. Do you remember watching him play football? Oh, yes. He was a real player. Yeah. He had another real player on that team, too, named Butkus. Yeah. 
And did he uh, tackle anybody? <laughs> well, he knocked people around pretty good, but Jim was, he had good hands. He could catch passes, he could run. He was reasonably fast, even. <laughs> you know, at that time, if we take a three-year period, we really had terrific players. If my count is right, I think we had 11 members of that team from my sophomore year to my senior year that played at least some time in the NFL. And that was pretty good with the fact that there were, how many teams were there? <laughs> there was only 16 and 14 in the NFL. And so, anyway, we had a good, a really damn good football team. Dave, you, you actually used your education, your experience there to, to make some change in the city of Champaign. What, how did your experience at Illinois shape your awareness in terms of fighting for equality and standing up to, to make the society, make the atmosphere in the neighborhood better and as best as it could be? Well, when I went over there, you have to understand my father couldn't read or write. I, no one in the family had ever thought about going to college. And so the fact I'm sitting here tonight is a tribute to my mom and dad who taught me how to behave first. And then when I went over there, I, I fell in love with the community. I never left. I've been there ever since. But it was a great atmosphere for learning and the faculty was uh, very amenable to having some tall kid from the country come talk to them. It was a really good experience for me, so much so that I stayed and I stay as long as I can. Champagne's been better for it, for sure. Coach, I understand that you had a visitor, that Kendall Gill came to see you recently. Tell me what you guys did when he came to visit. Talk basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and what and what did you watch? Yeah, well, Kendall and I, we're, we're trying to raise money for the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, we talked about it and did some work on that. Did, did you watch the Syracuse game? No, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> even, though, even though we won it, we were afraid we might lose it that time. <laughs> I like when, when individuals have an honor like this, i like to know what it was like the moment you found out. Coach, when they called you and said they were going to put you into the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame, what, would you, what were you doing and what was your reaction? I don't know what I was doing, but I was really honored at the time and I'm honored today. It's, uh, it's something very special to me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's special to all of us. Really. Yeah. When, when you got the word, how did you find out? You, Dave, yeah. Well, Josh called me and said we had a close vote, but you won by one. <laughs> 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 but, he, no, it was a, this is what I look like when I'm excited, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an exciting thing, and it's, it's nice to be here with these people, and I'm with an awfully good group, and that makes me feel very good. So how did you find out? Well, again, Josh called us, uh, called me, and you know, uh, let me know that I've been going to be inducted in this Hall of Fame. Of course, I was thrilled. You know, it's it's uh, it's such an honor, and you know, especially to be up here with with the round ball players. You know, I played with an oblong ball, and it didn't bounce back to me. But to be up here with you guys is is real pleasure. What do you think? with the history that you guys have with this university, what's the significance of celebrating past accomplishments and maintaining those types of ties with the school, between the school and the alums and, and people, even students who are there now? Well, when, when I was a kid and I would read about great athletes, it was what pulled me over the hump to be able to say, if I could be like that someday, not all athletes are great human beings, but I believed at the time they were. And I think for us to be able to tell the young people that if you work hard, do the right thing, even if you don't become an all-star, you may learn something from the process, and I have learned a hell of a lot from it. You, 
you know, being on a team is so important for the rest of your life. I mean, just teamwork. And, and, and I was lucky enough, and I, you know, they'll argue with me, but, you know, I played the ultimate team game. I mean, there's 11 guys out there, and if one guy messes up, that play won't work. You know, whereas if you had Downey on your basketball team, you know, maybe you didn't need the other four guys that often. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it taught you that. It taught you friendship. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, these guys have been so close to me for 50-plus years. And, you know, you, don't, you just don't get that in the business world like you do, do on a team. You know what I mean? These, you know, these are the guys you bled with. These are guys that straighten out your nose a few times. I mean, this is, it, it really is special to play on a, on a team. What is it? <laughs> Coach, what is it that gives you the greatest satisfaction about what Jim was talking about, about being a part of a team, or in your case, being a leader of a team? Well, I, I think a coach is the main leader, but you've got to have leadership on the team. Through the years, we always had tremendous leadership, and without that, you're not going to win. Well, you won a lot. Coach, I want you to keep your seat there for a second. Let's have a nice round of applause for Jim and Dave. Yeah. A couple of Illini legends, now Hall of Famers. Jim, congratulations. Coach, you stay seated there for a second, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. Thank coach, you. Coach, if you'll, st if you'll stay right here just a second, okay. Coach, we've got a little something else for you. Just okay, a second. okay, thank you. you. Stay here. Dave, congratulations. Thank you. thank you very much. Great Illini legends. I'd like now to welcome to the stage another member of the Fighting Illini basketball family, a former team manager and a 1991 graduate of Illinois, and the current lead sports anchor for CBS2 here in Chicago, Ryan Baker. Ryan? Thank you so much, Reese. And I see Coach Henson, you tried to get up. But hey, he's coachable. He's coachable. We can coach him up. Hey, we're all here tonight to celebrate greatness. Greatness that we watched or witnessed at some point and be able to touch that and see that tonight. And I have to thank this man for allowing me to be a part of some greatness. Uh, I met Coach Henson in person 31 years ago. I'll never forget it. It was at the City Suburban All-Star Game up at Loyola, and I walked up to Coach Hinton and said, Coach, my name is Ryan Baker. I'm at Thorn Ridge High School. You know, Quinn Buckner. He said, oh, hey, I know, I know, I know. And uh, I said, I wrote a letter, and I want to be one of your managers. Okay. Go to the office when you get on campus, and we'll work it out. Well, as soon as I dropped my bags off at the six-pack at Hopkins Hall, who remembers a six-pack? Any six-packers in the house? I I'm sorry. Eikenberry Commons. it will always be the six-pack to the old heads, right? And I, ran, I made a beeline to Assembly Hall, I think the very next day after I got on campus, and Dorothy Damewood, where's Dorothy? See, Dorothy, a lot of people don't know, she ran the program, am I right? Coach would say that. And Coach Coombs and Coach Collins and Coach Nagy was in there. And Coach is a man of his word. And that was in the fall of 1987. Little did I know how much that would change my life forever, being affiliated with the University of Illinois, with fighting Illini basketball. Um, I got a chance to have a front row seat to watch one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history and one of the greatest teams in college basketball history, the Flying Illini. And uh, as I tell people all the time, and Coach, you will know this, the games were great, and not even the practices, the preseason workouts at Huff. I know we're trying to raise some money for Ubbin, but back in the day, it was like watching a Rocky movie when the rust was falling down and the sweat. And it, but these guys, I tell you what, no excuses. I think we won a whole lot more games back when we were at Huff, didn't we, Kendall? Got to give a shout out to my brother from another mother, Kendall Gill, one of the Hall of Famers. Uh, we go way back. Uh, one of the godfather to my children. Uh, I always remember that time in the game, Coach Hinton said, hey, Kendall, going for Gill, because he had a lot going on. 
Do you remember that? And all of a sudden he said, no, I'm Bardo. That's a whole other thing. But I, I do want to say this. Coach Henson is all about toughness. That's the main thing he preached as a coach. And the fact that he's here tonight is a testament to the toughness that he talked about as a coach. So can we stand on our feet and give him a round of applause for just being here tonight? Because that was not a guarantee. So give it up for Coach Lou Henson. 423 wins in 21 seasons. That's what toughness is all about. And Coach, I hear you're swimming. You're back at Bromley in the morning swimming? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Olympics are coming up, you know. The, never count Coach Hitson out. Coach, we've, we've, uh, I went from your manager to your chauffeur. I used to drive him around the state on recruiting trips. Remember that? He diagrammed plays. I picked all the wrong ones. But Coach was, has been a tremendous role model, a mentor, a friend. And it's only fitting that on Father's Day weekend, we celebrate the patriarch of the modern era of Illinois basketball. And I know, Coach, you've got a street named after you. you got a basketball. Matter of fact, you have two courts. Well, when the history books are written, and one of the legacies of Lou and Mary Henson, I have to pause right there. Mary, can you stand up? We have to acknowledge you. Because that's the real head coach. OK? Anybody affiliated with Illinois basketball calls her mom. Thank you, Mary. Embrace me from day one, everybody who's come through that program. So thank you. And uh, I tell you what, that, that's your number one coach, isn't it? But let's see this new technology. Here we go. One of the legacies of Lou and Mary Henson will be their passion for supporting the academic success of their student athletes. They understood the power of the University of Illinois degree and the impact it would have on players' lives once their athletic careers were finished. In order to help cement that legacy and to honor their coach, a group led by Steve Lanter and Larry Lubin, my other brothers from other mothers, They've worked to establish the Lou and Mary Henson Academic Assistance Fund. As of date, over $500,000 in commitments have been raised to support this initiative. The endowed fund will ensure that Illinois men's basketball players will always have the financial assistance available to them to return to campus and finish their degrees. That deserves a round of applause. Thank you, Thank you Larry. Thank you, Steve.